Hey, hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a fantastic day out there. And I hope you've been able to sort of follow along with the last two lessons inside of this very short mini-series. Uh, in today's video, we are going to focus our attention on some other features inside of our chat application. And I guess the first thing I'll do here is to kind of remind you where we left off inside of our current application inside of the iPhone 10 simulator on the left side over here. And basically we have a list of chat messages inside of our table view. And uh, currently we only have one single section for all of our messages. And what we want to be able to do is to kind of separate these messages into different sections based on the timestamp in which these messages were sent, right? And so inside of the finished version of our application here, you'll see that we have multiple sections and each of these sections have a header up here in the light green. So you'll see August 25th, August 26th, and then so on and so forth. And so the way to get all of this to work inside of a table view is to first provide the number of sections and also the number of rows per section inside of your table view controller. And so that's kind of what we're going to be working on in today's video. Let's go ahead and get started by going back into Xcode and start coding right now. Alrighty everybody, welcome back to our lesson. And why don't we get started by diving right back into where we left off in the last video. And I guess the first thing I'll do is to just rerun my code inside of the simulator. And what we have right now is a simple table view that has about five messages. And each one of those messages are coming from this array called chat messages right over there on line 20. Okay, so that's kind of where we left off. And what we want to be able to do is to start providing some sections for our table view. So we have one section up here, a second one there, a third one there, and then so on and so forth. And the way to do this is to go inside of your table view controller subclass, which is over here. And I'm going to provide a second override. And so let's say override. And I'm going to provide number of sections inside of my table view. And for this guy, you can return whatever you want for now. I'm going to use an arbitrary value of five and rerun this inside of my simulator. Uh, you'll see that you'll have a lot of these messages being repeated inside of your table view. Uh, there's a warning down here that you should be able to just ignore for now. And so what's happening now is we're duplicating each one of these sections to be five times inside of our table view, right? And what we can also do is to somehow provide a title that is going to separate all of our sections, kind of like this green title up at the top there. And you can do this a couple of different ways. I'm going to use title for header. I think that's what this method is called. And you can say return some kind of string section. And let's use string interpolation. I'm going to pop in the section from that method. And let me just rerun my app. You'll see a separator section right at the top of each one of our section right there instead of the header. So section zero, we have one, and then we have two, and also three. Okay, so that's pretty good. And what we want to really be able to do is to provide, I guess, different messages per section inside of our application, right? So we have two messages up here for the first section and then a different set of messages here and then so on and so forth. So let me kind of show you how to do that by modifying this method called number of rows in section. And we're currently returning messages.count, right? And that value is currently five. So you see one, two, three, four, five up here. And why don't we go ahead and modify that to just return a row count of one. And you'll kind of see what that does inside of our app. We have five sections and each section has one row. Okay, so you can easily just modify this. And you'll see that the way we are going to kind of reproduce this effect is to modify these two switches, the number of section as well as the number of rows, and we'll kind of be able to get this effect inside of our app. And so let's kind of move on to providing a different array of messages just so that we can provide this effect inside of our app, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recreate my array. So let me comment that out first and down here, let's say chat messages 
And I'm going to create an array of arrays, which will look like this. So this is what we call a two-dimensional array. It's just a simple array that contains two empty elements currently. And inside of each one of these elements, I'm going to provide some messages. So let me just copy this over here and pop that in there. And then I'll copy this and I'll pop that in the top one as well. So right now we have two messages in the first slot of our chat messages array. And then for the second element, I'm going to provide the rest of these messages here. So let me just go over here, uncomment that, cut that, and paste that in there. Okay, so now that I have my new array of chat messages, let me just delete the old one. And you can try to build, you can try to run, but it's not going to work because you have one error message down here. So what I would like to do is to actually first modify the number of sections. And so what I want to be able to show you how to do is to kind of represent our table view using this array. And we're going to have two sections. We have the first one up here and then the second one over here. And the way that you can kind of link this together is to use number of sections. And we'll just say chat messages dot count. Okay, so currently chat messages is this entire array dot count would give you a value of two. So one and then two over here. And then finally, what you can do is instead of number of rows in section, you can actually return chat messages and we'll use this section as our index. And then you can say count. All right. So this might be a little bit confusing and I know a lot of students find this part uh, somewhat confusing, but you kind of just have to see what's going to happen. Uh, first thing I want to do is to fix this error message down here. And the problem is that this variable called chat message is no longer valid. Uh, the way we're getting it outside of our array is no longer the correct thing to do. Uh, let me show you the correct way to access our message with index path. And there's a variable or a property on index path called section and we'll use another index accessor and instead of here we'll say index path dot row and now we can finally run our code and you'll kind of see what effect this has inside of our application right so let's kind of take a look at what we have here we have a one section at the very top that contains two messages and those are these two messages here and then for the second section we have these three messages down below Okay, so again, the way that this works is we have number of sections is going to return us two, so zero and one, so that's two sections. And then for each one of the rows, number of rows and section, we have chat messages, section dot count. So for the first section, we have two, and then for the third section, we have three. And that is pretty much represented by our array structure up here. Now, if you introduce a third element, so let's say comma, and let's create another message here. So chat message. And for this guy, we'll say, I guess the third section message. And let's just use a value of true there. And the way that we've set up our view controller, our table view controller, we are able to just add messages very, very simply inside of this array. And the moment that you do that, your table view controller will pretty much pick up on the changes inside of this guy here. And then all the way down below, you'll see a third section message. And so it looks like our application here is slowly starting to take shape, right? So what that means is we're kind of ready to move on to the next feature that we want to build out. And you'll notice that all of these section headers inside of here, they're actually printing out a date or a timestamp for all of our messages, right? So that means that we have to provide our chat messages with some kind of timestamp object. And uh, I'll show you exactly how to do that right now. Uh, if you go inside of your view controller file, you'll have this struct on the top called chat message. And I believe that we created this in the last episode. Uh, instead of just having text and is incoming these two properties, I'm going to introduce a third property. And we'll just let this guy be called date like that and let it be of type date like so. Okay. So if you try to build now, you're not going to be able to do so because your chat message constructors over here, they expect you to pass in this date as well. 
So let's hit the fix. And what you can do is you can provide the current date by using date paren paren like that. And everything should be okay. You're going to have to provide the similar fix for all of these guys down here as well. So let me just do that really quickly there and try to build. And one more time, let me try to run. Uh, everything looks good. We should be able to see the exact same app as we had before. And that's what we get. Cool. And so what exactly do I want to do with this date property, right? Well, let me kind of go down to the method called title for a header. And what I want to do is to provide some kind of date object in here and then print it out inside of the title. So let me see what this change does. You'll see a section and you'll see this over here, right? So that's kind of what I want to do. And instead of just popping in the date over here, I'm going to grab the first message inside of each one of my sections. So I have section here and let's say this, let's, let's see first message in section. This is actually going to come from my chat messages array. And the way I'm going to access it is to just say chat messages. I'm going to use the section property or variable from the function call. And let's say section like that. And you can actually say first on this array. So this over here is going to give you back an array. And the first object of your array is kind of uh, accessed using first like so. Now, one thing that you have to be very careful about is this first object is going to give you back an optional. So if you look over here, this first message is a chat message optional. And you don't really want to deal with this. So you perform this if let optional binding like that. And the code inside of here will actually execute if there is indeed a first object inside of chat messages section like that. Okay, so minor detail. And what I want to do with this guy is I want to say return. And this method expects you to return some kind of string object. So we're just going to say something like date and let's say, let's use some string interpolation and first message in section like that. Okay. So having in that a little bit of code, we can kind of see instead of our header, now we have date over here and then we have this chat message thing, right? Uh, instead of printing out that, we want to use the date and then you'll get the date object being printed out inside of your string. And that looks pretty good, right? Uh, instead of printing out the date in this kind of format, you can actually say let date formatter equals date formatter like this. And you can give it a custom format if you wanted to do so. Uh, one way to do that is to provide the date format string like this. I'm going to use the United States uh, date format of month, day, and then year. You can feel free to provide whatever format fits your uh, locale. And then finally, you can say let date string equals this date formatter guy. And you can say string from some kind of date object. And this date is going to come from our first message in section and just use that date property. Uh, remember, currently these date properties are all going to reflect the current date, which is August uh, 26th of 2018. Uh, the last thing we want to do is to return that date string there and you can run your application again. You'll see that the date object is now going to be the simple 8-26-2018. Okay, so quite a bit of code, but we are finally able to kind of get these section headers to have a date object inside of it. And uh, it's looking a lot nicer. Uh, the one thing we want to now be able to do is to give our messages a different date depending on how we set up our messages, right? So for example, we have August 25th, 26th, and then lastly we have uh, September 3rd there. So why don't I show you how we can provide a custom date object for each one of our chat messages over here, right? So instead of using a date like that, we want to provide a custom date. And I'm going to use an extension on the actual date object itself. And this guy, you can create a static function on it. And I'm going to say date from custom string. And we'll say custom string, that this guy be a string. And this static function, let's return a date object like that. And so instead of here, it expects you to return some kind of date. 
what you can do is to return the current date like that. And so now that I have this method available, I want to use this instead of this date call over here. So let's just pop that in there and pop that in there as well. But you can't really do that. Uh, what you got to do is to say date and you can say uh, date from custom string. And this string is going to kind of just be a empty string for now. Okay, so that looks pretty good. You can copy this and paste that in there as well. You can try to run your application and everything is going to look just the same as it did before. So we have August 26th. And uh, what I can do now inside of this custom method, date from custom string, is to somehow utilize this custom string to provide us a custom date object. And the easiest way to do this is to, again, use this date formatter object. So let's create another one. Date formatter equals date formatter. Date formatter, let's say date format, equals the same string of, let's say, month, day, and year, 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 year. And then finally, you can return date formatter, and you can actually get the date from some kind of string, right? So this is going to actually give you a date object based on a string here. So for example, if you wanted to return something like, let's see, 10, 31, uh, 2018, you can just do that and the date formatter will give you this object over here, this string, as a date object, or it's going to attempt to do so. Uh, you can just remove that over here, click on this. You can use a bang like that if you wanted to, or you can use a better way of getting the optional out by just defaulting that to this current date object like that. And uh, I believe this is a better fix for the optional uh, solution. And what you can do now is instead of using this hard-coded string, you can just use the custom string from the method call parameter. And so just paste that in there. Okay. And uh, now that we have our date from custom string method set up, uh, the custom string that we actually want to provide for these calls will kind of look like this. So I'll use a 08 and let's say 03 and 2018. And uh, I'll pop that in here as well. So now what you have inside of your chat messages array are a ton of different messages. So you'll see that the top one, this section right here is actually 0803 2018 and uh, it pretty much comes from the first message over here so this chat message contains this custom date object and uh, for the other messages down here you can use the custom date as well so let's paste that in there and let's change this to 9 and maybe 15 uh, for this guy we can do the same thing so let's see 09 slash 15 and then for the last one, why don't we use the date of Halloween? So let's use 31 there. And running your code again, all of these section headers will have a different date, kind of looking like that. So August 3rd, September 15th, and October 31st down at the bottom. Okay, everybody, that's going to wrap it up for today's lesson. Hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully you learned something new. In the very next video, we are going to take a look at how we can provide one of these custom headers inside of each one of our sections. And the trick we are going to use is to override something called intrinsic content size. And so hopefully you'll look forward to that video. If you want to learn more about Swift development, make sure to check out the couple of courses in the description below. If you want to download the source code for today's video, the link is down there as well. That's going to be it for today. I'll see you guys next time. Keep on coding guys. Bye bye.